In this video, I'm going to go through all the special tests for the elbow that you need, the common pathologies that you'll find when you're assessing the elbow for physiotherapy and physical therapy conditions. Let's go. So for ligamentous instability at the elbow, we've got our valgus and varus test. So for our valgus test, what we're going to do is we're testing for our ulnar collateral ligament. And so we're going to create a valgus force. So we're going to stabilise the humerus, stabilise the um, ulna and radius with the um, fingers onto the ulnar collateral ligament. You would then create a valgus force at the elbow, slight flexion, and you'll be looking for instability of that ligament. Positive test would be pain or any of those apprehension signs. The opposite would be true of our varus test, so we want to go on to the feel the lateral aspect of the arm with the hand in supination. We're going to um, palpate around the radial collateral ligament. We're going to stabilize the humerus with one hand and then we're going to create a varus force. And again, we're feeling that ligament on this side and we'll be looking for pain on the lateral aspect, laxity or feelings of apprehension. So codes and sign for tennis elbow, you can do in loads of different positions. You can do in sitting, you can do in standing, you can do in lots of positions, but purposes of the video, we're in line, we'll just do it here. So what I'm going to do is palpate around the lateral epicondyle of the elbow. And then I'm going to ask Kate, we're going to come into pronation of the hand. I'm going to ask Kate to uh, make a fist and I want you to slightly... Um, radially deviate so come across to the thumb side and then extend your wrist so extend your wrist up and then i'm going to get you to hold that and don't let me push you down and as i resist that uh, extension moment you'll be palpating around this lateral epicondyle and you'll be asking about pain in that region so mills test again can be done in a variety of different positions but again for the purpose of the video we'll do it in this position essentially again we're going to palpate around that a lateral epicondyle of the elbow. We're going to take the patient's arm from a flex position with pronation. So pronation of the wrist. We're going to extend the elbow and flex the wrist while palpating through that lateral epicondyle. And again, what we're looking for is pain in and around this lateral epicondyle, similar to the patient's symptoms. That would be a positive test for tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. For medial epicondylitis, one of the tests we can do is palpating around that medial epicondyle. So we're going to extend the elbow, extend the wrist with a supinated hand, and we're looking for pain or the reproduction of pain around this medial epicondyle of the elbow. The other thing you could do would be take the wrist into flexion. So if we just... Again, difficult on the video, but if you go into flexion here, Kate, I want you to maintain that position. Don't let me pull you down. And I'm going to resist elbow flexion. And again, you'd be looking for the reproduction of pain on the medial epicondyle when you resisted that flexion of the elbow. That would be a sig sign or signifier of medial epicondylitis. Okay, so for posterolateral uh, instability at the elbow, um, you can do a posterolateral instability test. So you're going to bring the hand overhead with external rotation of the forearm and 40 degrees flexion at the elbow. Then we're going to create an AP force on the radius and the ulna. And we would be looking for apprehension or feelings of instability around the lateral aspect of the elbow. Okay, so for our tabletop relocation test, the patient is going to perform a press up on the edge of the table with one arm, with the forearm in supination. And we're going to be looking with this position for apprehension occurring at about 40 degrees of flexion. Um, and then what we can do is repeat this with our thumb pressing on the radial head. So if we come up to the radial head and create some compression through this area, so you repeat that. And again, can you go a bit lower and back up? So that would be a positive test if your um, compression through the radial head helped with reducing symptoms from when you, it wasn't there. For the chair sign, the patient's seated with elbows flexed to 90 degrees, forearms supinated and arms abducted. 
Patient tries to rise from the chair by pushing down only with the arms and the test is positive if apprehension or radial head dislocation occurs with elbow extension. So a Tunnell's test for a cubital tunnel syndrome um, would be where we would um, lift the elbow up. We find the, the medial um, epicondyle of the elbow and the electronon process and you've got your tunnel in between that. So you've got your cubital tunnel which sits in between the medial epicondyle and the electronon process here. And this is where your ulnar nerve just comes through. So it comes down the arm, comes through this area. And so what we can do is tap around that canal, around the tunnel. And this is a Tunnell's test for the elbow. We're going to tap for 30 seconds. And what you're looking for is pain and or paresthesia in the distribution of the ulnar nerve or similar to the patient's symptoms. So Wartenberg sign is where the patient is in a seated position with the hands resting palm down on the table. Examiner then passively spreads the fingers. So you passively spread the fingers apart. And then you'd ask the patient to bring them back together again. Thumb as well. Perfect. And then what we're looking for is the inability for the little finger to come back to the hand. If the little finger stays out, that would be an indication of an ulnar nerve pathology. So that would be positive for ulnar nerve pathology. So for the elbow flexion test, we're going to come into full flexion in the coronal plane of the elbow. And we're going to come into full extension of the wrist. So extension of the wrist with depression through the shoulders. We're going to maintain this for three to five minutes. And then if you've got distribution into the ulnar nerve, if you've got paresthesia into that ulnar nerve, that would be an indicative of an ulnar nerve pathology. So for the pronator teres uh, syndrome test, we would have the patient at 90 degrees elbow flexion, and we're gonna resist pronation of the hand as you come into extension, okay? So you ask the patient to extend the elbow as they turn the palm over, and you're gonna resist that movement, so go for it. And relax. And we'd be looking for pain in the pronator teres region, weakness or paresthesia or neurological symptoms, that would be a positive sign. Okay, so pinch grip test is a test for the nerve, median nerve um, issues. And so we'd ask the patient to make an okay sign with their hand. So just make an okay sign. And what we'd be looking for with this would be whether they're able to do a fingertip to fingertip position. A, a positive test would be where they're unable to do this and they fall into a pulp to pulp position. This would be indicative that they have a nerve pathology in the median nerve or a nerve pathology in general that was up and makes it unable for them to create that okay sign and there would be more in this position. If you found that video helpful then I'm sure that you'll really enjoy the one on the screen now which goes through shoulder special tests that you can use with your shoulder pain patients and don't forget to subscribe to the channel which means that you won't miss any of our videos on physical therapy and fitness. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next one.